This year we did something new. We introduced a new component to our universal controllers, a motorized fader, okay? So it means that we have made um, a eight channel audio interface. We have also a camera control unit with motorized sliders, our faders, and an RCP. Very exciting. In this video, I'll show you the waveboard. This is the waveboard. It is a controller in the XC series with eight motorized sliders, um, displays and utility buttons, a control sections over here. And you see for each slider, we have an associated LED bar that will work as a VU meter. And in this case, it is hooked up with an ATEM switcher. So why are we using ATEM switches all the time? Well, historically, we have a long history with ATEM switches, and they are actually pretty great devices for featuring or uh, um, showcasing all these controllers because they have such an immense amount of parameters. There is camera control, there is audio control, there are source selections, there are so many things you can do in an ATEM switcher that makes them perfect for demonstrating the utility of our universal broadcast controllers. So let's get started and look at how this panel works with the ATEM switcher. And I have brought up the ATEM software control for a 2ME switcher with, what do we have? 20 inputs, media players, and so forth, which is mapped out on this panel. Now, um, you can see in the displays, and I'm not sure you can see it on the video, but it will say audio channel one, audio channel two, three, four, and so forth. And over here it says XLR, okay? So uh, as I press these buttons, you can see audio channel one. I'm turning on and off the channel as I repeatedly press this button. Here I have audio follow video. That is clear and should be readable on the video that this is audio follow video and this is on. So these buttons are basically mapped to that. Now in this demonstration, I didn't map anything to these buttons down here. That's just a matter of taste if I want to or not. Now, uh, what you see right there is a VU meter. So you see that, yes, we have a lot of audio sitting on camera two. If I turn down the fader here, you see that I'm adjusting the volume of this one, of course, and I can do absolutely the same from the software. So you see the slider is following as I'm moving the, this one inside the ATEM software control. I'm moving the slider over here to uh, adjust the volume. So it goes forth and back. Of course it does. This is how it always works with Skyhawk controllers. Now, I want to show you a cool thing because there's a reason why we have a meter section on the left. That allows you to expand the panel to more than just eight channels. You can go 16, uh, 24, 32 even. It doesn't make sense with the ATEM switcher. But uh, yeah, I have something in store that is more like an example of what you could do with this. Um, just wait and see. So let's uh, see for now we are at F1. So this function key will select the first eight channels. And as I press F2, it will now work with the last channel. So uh, you can see it in the software as well. Uh, let's just see what happens if I move all these things down. Okay. And then I go back to F1. You can see the faders will just adjust. Just adjust. <laughs> I'm sorry about that will adjust to uh, the changed mapping of the channels over to the input sources on the ATEM. The final channel over here, which doesn't change when I change this, those two channels are in fact, um, this is the, the master channel. So you see I have the master channel right here. And also I see the master volume on this meter. And here I have the XLR channel, um, which is not changed as I go between F1 and F2. All right, that's audio. You see in this display, by the way, it will tell you what is the different state. So you can see in the display, it says audio one to six, audio seven to 12. When I go here, it says something totally different. And what is that different? Well, because I wanted to show you how versatile this panel is, I decided why not try to uh, give you an idea about using this for camera control, for instance. So let's go to the camera control tab in the ATEM software. So it's connected to the ATEM switcher but now each slider adjusts iris, okay? So as I pull iris for camera one, you see, oops, you see fader one going up and down, all right? And I can adjust iris with this fader too, or this fader, or this fader. Now, what is this bar now doing? Well, I decided to map this bar as a, I don't know, confidence monitor or whatever you want to call it, so that this LED bar now indicates the strength of the parameter these 
sliders are all affecting, okay? Um, yeah, it just looks cool, okay? And uh, that's probably much of the effect because obviously there is some kind of redundancy in both seeing the fader and also the LED bar sitting here. One thing that you might uh, want to know is that the LED bar is not reflecting the position of the slider. It is reflecting the value of the iris coming from the ATEM switcher. So in fact, it is a confidence monitor that uh, if you see the LED bar move, you know that the value did change over in the ATEM switcher. You can be certain of that. And that's a pretty nice thing. Now, in this case, I mapped these buttons to something else. I, I decided to just for fun put in a uh, detail adjustment. So it says detail on off, low, high, and I can go the other way on the lower button down there. I can also adjust the white balance for each camera with these buttons. But that was just like an example I wanted to throw into the mix so you could see how this is working. Okay, one fun thing could be to do a little uh, configuration of the panel. So I have attached a USB cable to it. And it means if we bring up the firmware application, I can show you how we can uh, enter such configuration mode on the online controller here. Um, I open the serial monitor, type in webconfig, and uh, it will expose the IP address of the controller. I'll now copy this one, paste it into a web browser. And let me just see, okay, new tab paste like that <clears throat> and my, now my controller is brought up well um, I want to change the color of the LED bars and um, the quickest way of doing that would be to address each of these sections in fact this is how I set the color in the first place so I now hold down shift and I click those three sections in the web interface okay so then I go down here and you can see when I am in the state called cam 1 to 6 I have assigned local color to be white I want to make it, um, what is cool? Ice. Ice is nice. I choose ice. So uh, let's say I wanted an indication that I'm now not working on camera 1 to 6, but some other camera. I could choose a different color in the case I'm going to bank number, f uh, the, the last one, um, function key 4. So I will choose for that spring green, okay? Spring green color for that one. And now a cool thing about this configuration interface is I save and instantly you see the effect on the panel. So there you go as, yep, there you go. You see it's now blue. If I press here, it will adjust to camera, um, uh, sorry, uh, uh, nine and, and upwards. And we have spring green on those bars. I go back to um, uh, F3 uh, and we are back to blue again. So uh, if there was one thing that I still wanted to show you was the confidence monitoring. So let's say I, I click fader one and I simply remove the function of this fader for adjusting iris like here uh, and I put in no action like this, I save. So uh, what, ha what happens now is that I simply remove the function of this fader. Why would I do that? Because I wanted to demonstrate to you that if I, t if I pull this fader now, nothing is happening in the ATEM software control. Uh, if I pull this fader next to, I have camera 2 adjustment, but this one has now been disabled by me. Notice how this LED bar will reflect the value from the ATEM switcher. So as I pull the ATEM switcher value, you see the LED bar is your confidence monitor. Very useful to have that feedback to make you certain that you are adjusting the parameters you want to adjust. Now enjoy the waveboard. We think it's a cool, cool, cool audio controller. It fits perfectly with the XC series so you can click it on the side of other controllers or you can use it standalone as you see right here. You have the utility buttons in the top with nice OLED displays so you will never doubt what they are doing and you have the meta section that will replicate the surface endlessly by shift levels so that you can address more than just eight channels and you can even do camera coloring uh, shading like you just saw me do. Possibilities are endless thanks to Unisketch and all the device cores uh, that we have developed for Universal Broadcast Controlling. Let's get this party started.